All right, the Jets are just starting their offseason program with a whole new level of optimism. And joining me now is a man about to embark on his 10th season as the anchor of the Jets offensive line, a three-time pro bowler, left tackle, DeBrickashaw Ferguson. It seems like just yesterday we <laughs> saw you at the draft, man. Good to see you again. Likewise, likewise. How's things? Good, real good. You know, you've got a big week, or I should say a big month coming up. On June 11th, you have your big gala coming up uh, for, your, uh, for your foundation. Tell us a little bit about this gala and, and why it was so important for you to put this foundation together well this gal is uh, just a great time to to bring in uh, you know fans and athletes and just have a uh, dinner we're gonna have a, a wine tasting segment and it's also to raise funds for the foundation you know we do not only uh, financial aid but we also support our students with programs we have three major programs uh, that all um, focus on mentorship uh, so that's something that we're really proud of and we, we want to continue doing. Right. From Freeport High School, you're certainly very involved in the community. You have a street named after you. <laughs> you know, I, I almost, I, it wouldn't let me great to have a street named after you. You've got a street named after you there. But your scholarship funds, or I should say your foundation, is based on, you said, mentorship and scholarships. But it's education that is at the root of this. Is that because your mother was an educator herself? I think it's part of it. I also believe that, you know, when I was growing up, that there were a lot of students that didn't have the same opportunities that I had. And I wanted to make sure that they had a chance to, to, to continue their education. Sometimes, you know, you meet students that don't have enough for financial aid but not necessarily enough to, to, to pay for the school that they want to go to so it's not just about giving funds as well it's also about mentorship and making sure that they have the tools to utilize what they've learned and been given but funding is very important here um, you say that this is not limited to but it includes Hempstead Baldwin Freeport Uniondale are, are you targeting students at underfunded schools, schools that are having problems with their budgets? I think we're, we're targeting all schools, really. I think they're, they're, you know, it's always unfortunate when schools are not doing as well uh, for, for whatever reason, whether it be funding or cutbacks, but I think we're really focusing on the students. We recognize that uh, as college, colleges get more expensive, it's just going to be more important to make sure that students have not only the, the, fin the financial means, but also the tools necessary in doing well. I mean, that's, I mean, that was a problem when we were going to college, right. and it continues to, I mean, the, the, the cost of going to college nowadays, I mean, right. it's, it's ridiculous. I'm about to try to send my daughter to college. <laughs> I might have her sign up for this. And again, you know, I was fortunate to get a full scholarship. You know, I had athletic abilities, and that helped me go to the University of Virginia. But not everybody has full scholarships. Not everybody gets those uh, full rides, and that's why we want to kind of be in that gap. So you're kind of work, you're kind of filling the gap here, right? You're working on tweeners, if you will, some that are that have enough money that they can afford to go to college, but maybe need a little bit more to help them out. And it's also, you know, they have to apply. There's essays, so you have to be selected. It's not merely, hey, I, I have the need, help me. That's, th there's also a, a limited amount of resources, but that's why we have events like the fundraiser, the fundraiser on June 11th to kind of bring more support so we can continue to help students. We've uh, given out since 2007 over $241,000 to wow. 160 students. So we're really proud of our efforts, but we want to do more, and uh, this will help us get there. What I like about it, it's not specifically just funding. It's also the mentorship program as well. It's almost like you're giving them the tools to succeed in the real world, too. Definitely. You know, we recognize that, you know, for a student to do well, they need support. And a lot of times students don't do well in their first year or first semester because they may feel a lack of support. So and even in some of our mentorship programs, we talk about building a network. We talk about uh, having some uh, a family, a community-based approach. And that's what we try to be for our students. Well you know what you're getting a lot of kids invested in the program I think that's uh, that's very good and I think what's happening is I think we've seen you know in your life how all of your coaches and your educators have kind of inspired you which leads me to the Jets okay okay and you have a new instructor if you will for the third time in your 10 years here you've got a new head coach Todd Bowles um, at what point does the honeymoon phase turn into he's a football coach? At what point is it you're no longer just, you know, glad handing one another, and at some point he turns into your coach? I'm sure when we uh, enter that training camp phase, when we start having games, then it's going to be, you know, all business. Right now, this is voluntary. You know, even our, our, our we've had a voluntary mini camps uh, because we have a new coach. But right now, this is, is it's, it's, 
it's a learning process. We're learning the, the, the schemes, we're learning the systems, but once training camp hits and we have a limited amount of time to, to focus in on what we need to get accomplished, I'm sure things will change. It's all love right now though, right? It's love now, <laughs> it's love now. Now we'll get that tough love a little later. <laughs> <laughs> but you on the offensive line, first off, you particularly in these 10 years, you've had to go through four offensive coordinators, Six quarterbacks, six starting quarterbacks, and I'm talking about guys who have started multiple games from Pennington all the way uh, to this last year as well. Um, how difficult is this for the offensive line? How big of a burden is it for the offensive line when the scheme changes, when a quarterback changes behind you? You know, we're, we're called to adapt. And I think, you know, it's a part of the league, it's a part of the game, that you, you have a lot of turnover. Sometimes it's coaches, sometimes it's players, but we're all professionals. We try to learn how to be best at our roles and then produce, you know. We're called to produce. Why is it that the offensive line, it seems like, are, are always the voice of reason? I mean, you know, you have you have the wide receivers that are calling for the ball. The running backs are saying we need to run the ball a little bit more. The offensive line, though, always is the voice of reason on the O-line, isn't it? Well, I'll definitely take that as a compliment. Um, you know, we're, we're just there to, to do our jobs. We recognize that. It's important for us to do our jobs first so that the quarterbacks, the running backs, the wide receivers can do what they do best. And so we want to make sure that there's no hiccups in, on our line. And uh, I think, you know, with guys like Nick Mangold, Bruno Giacomini, uh, Willie Colon, and, and, and now James Carpenter, I think we have a great opportunity to do and that. And you're always supporting the quarterback. It doesn't matter what quarterback you, there's never any pity for the guy that is on his way out. It's about lifting up the guy that uh, is behind you, more or less. Well, that's a, that's a hard role. I think it's, a, you know, oftentimes a lot of the, 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 a lot of the pressure goes to that role. I mean, it's, it's a team game, but you know, a lot of pressure goes to that role. So we want to make sure we're doing everything to, to allow him to, to do his best. Undue pressure? Does the media put too much pressure on the quarterback? I'll just say there's a lot of pressure, you know, and I just think it's, it's, just, it's a part of that role. You know that if you're going to be a quarterback, um, you're going to get a lot, of, a lot of pressure, so. You've been 10 years, this is going to be your 10th year in the league. Right. You, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a big number for an offensive lineman to be in the league for 10 years. Do you, do you think about the next step at all? You know, I, I don't know what, to, what the next step will be, but hopefully uh, I won't have to worry about that for, for a little while longer. Okay, that's not even, a, you know what, I mean, every time you, you turn around from Pete Kendall to Willie Colon, you know, to Alan Fanica, you've always been surrounded by guys that have been in the league for such a long yeah. time. You know, we will get 20 years out of you, can we? Mm, that's, uh, that's a goal <laughs> number, oh yeah. <laughs> first things first, we're going to see you out there at the gala on, uh, on June 11th out at Chelsea Piers. DeBrickishaw Ferguson, thank you so much for joining us, man. Well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.